Now, Agile did not, now this manifesto just gave us some values and principles. So they did not tell us you know, how to achieve that. So it was not, uh, it's not obviously a framework or a set of processes or tools. And that is where we have these different frameworks. They gave us some guidelines and Scrum being the most popular one. So did Agile come first or Scrum? Agile. Any other thoughts? I think Agile came first. So there is this paper called the New New Product Development Team. This was published in 1985-86 by two gentlemen from Japan. Here in this paper, they had mentioned that companies like uh, Honda, Xerox, Fuji, uh, they were already practicing Scrum much, much before the Agile Manifesto was written for software development. So they were talking about this uh, overlapping phases. They're talking about self-organizing teams that, you know, that we are discussing these days. Right? So this is a nice read if you, uh, autonomy, right? this is an important concept. How do we build those self-managed, self-organized things? If you get a chance to go through this paper, it's a nice read. And uh, we'll be surprised to know that uh, the origination of Scrum uh, happened in a way before the Agile Manifesto was written. So what, what uh, they told was, you know, we're always you know, playing the game like a relay race. Right? Uh, you know, we have these different teams or different departments and we are passing on the baton from one team to another team. So what this told was, you know, instead of playing like a relay race, moving the code, or moving the product from one department to another. So what we do is, they literally picked up this word from rugby, where you know the players doing a hurdle that is called scrum in rugby, the literal meaning of scrum. So what they're saying is together as a team, we have to move forward with our goal, with our product, moving the scrum downfield. And so it's a nice, interesting read. So, so what is scrum? Uh, it is agile framework to develop and deliver the project with its own principles and values, which yeah. involve primary uh, client focus and uh, continuous delivery. Yeah, yeah. So let's say it is a lightweight framework to solve complex problems. Right. So why lightweight? Because it has very minimal uh, elements to it. The first element is the rule. And much before that, it right, uh, has based on Empiricism. So what does empiricism mean? Empiricism means learning from your experience. That's why we have these PDCA cycles where you know, every sprint or every iteration, we are learning. We are discovering more uh, things about our product, about our solution. So we're learning from experience and applying that learning. And it has three pillars. What are those? Transparency, technology, inspection, and adaption. So these are the three pillars of Scrum. Transparency, transparency about the artifacts, transparency about the roles and responsibilities, transparency about admitting to your own mistakes, the transparency about the state of the work. So unlike you know, where a typical project manager will, you know, in a, in a traditional way, create a Microsoft project, some grant charts. We have no idea how to read that. Forget about reading, you know, probably you know, as a developer, uh, I never had access to those. You know, only the project manager will have it. So how many of you as a developer had access to those Microsoft project files that your project manager had prepared? At least I never had access to it. It was not transparent. It was only, you know, whatever tasks are allocated to us as a developer, uh, you know, I was following it. So here we are seeing Everything is transparent, all the artifacts, the state of the work and who is doing what through this you know, visual information radiators that we call the scrum boards, the Kanban boards. And it's easy to read, easy to change, easy to update. And it has some roles. What are those? Scrum master, product owner and the team. Yeah. And we say developers or development team. Uh, everybody who is involved in developing it is a developer. So we don't recognize any other role. We say 
we recognize skills. Somebody could be a UI developer, somebody is a services developer, somebody is a DBA, somebody is a business analyst, somebody will be a test, tester, uh, QA. We recognize skills, but not roles. So three simple roles and some events. So what are those events? Scrum meetings. So we, we begin with sprint planning and daily standup. Sprint review. Then retrospective. Uh, Backlog refinement. Even though we'd say this is not an official event as per Scrum Guide, but it's a continuous exercise. And all these events have to be time box. Time box. So what does time box mean? Whether you finish or not, you should close then. Yeah, yeah. So finish that activity or not. It is the maximum amount of time that we can spend. So the moment our time box expires, that event is closed. And it has some artifacts. What are those? Um, burn down chart. Burn down chart again is uh, a practice. Okay. okay. So uh, user stories. To begin with product backlog. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sprint plan. Sprint backlog. Sprint plan cannot be artifact, right? Yeah, sprint planning is the event, right? And the yeah, outcome, event. Outcome, yeah. of, outcome of that is a sprint backlog. Plan. And finally, after the sprint is over, okay. whatever we have built is the increment. So nothing less, nothing more. So that is why they say Scrum is a very simple framework. It's a lightweight framework, simple to understand, but difficult to master. So Cam Swabber and Jeff Sutherland, they uh, no, they brought in Scrum in around 1995. They wrote a book called Agile Software Development Using Scrum. And they wrote some papers, but they introduced, they wrote this first Scrum Guide only in 2010. And you know, there was some update in 2020. This is a simple thing. Roles, events, artifacts. So they did. Now there is there are no other practices or no other guidelines. This is that is why the same. This is a lightweight framework, simple to understand. Why difficult to master? Because uh, it's very subtly they have mentioned what to do and what not to do. And you'll be surprised to know. And uh, based on this, and it's about in less than fourteen pages. If you take out the uh, index and all other acknowledgements, I think it's about just ten pages. The Scrum Guide and Scrum.org has three certifications based on just these 10 pages, PSM1, PSM2, and PSM3. In fact, uh, there are about only 3,000 people uh, in the entire world who have cleared PSM3, 3,000 or 3,200 something. That's so difficult. But let's understand what is the Scrum process. So you begin a product development with what? What do you need? Requirements. Uh, even much before that? Uh, user need. Some kind of vision. User stories. User stories are part of our backlog, but we begin with the product vision. In fact, our vision was you know, to probably you not know, digitize, and then our, that is the strategy. And our vision of the product was how to improve uh, probably ease of doing business online. We begin with some product vision. And much before that, what do you need? Somebody to pay our salaries, right? Somebody has to. Budget. Policy. Stakeholders or sponsors who are going to uh, sponsor the project or the product and help us with the vision. And from the vision emerges our product backlog. What is product backlog? It contains the overall, overall requirement of the client. Yeah, it's the single source of the requirement. So what it says is one product, one product backlog single source of requirement and it is a live document. What does that mean? Continuously, they include any additional requirements. Yeah, yeah. it is never frozen. Yeah. So as long as one thing is, as long as the product exists, the backlog exists. And take, take this example, right? Uh, you know, Maruti 800, anybody even knows Maruti 800? Very much. Okay. So that is that was there for how many years? And it was there for Ever, I mean, for ages, right? Yeah. And as long as you know, that product was there in the market, the backlog of the Maruti 800 was still live. 
only when they discarded it, uh, you know, probably that product backlog uh, was done with. But as long as your product exists in the market, your backlog exists. Let's let's sort of take take for example Microsoft Word. That also you know, exists since last like, two and a half decades now. Do you think they have frozen the requirements of Microsoft Word? No. That is why we are saying as long as the product exists, the product backlog exists, and it's a live document, you continuously prioritize it. Add items, remove items. And who owns it? Product owner. So product owner is Can the we back. have uh, can we have multiple product uh, backlogs or sorry, multiple product goals? More than one product goal? You know, it could be a combination of suppose say our product goal is one is to mm, improve. Uh, ease of doing business online and also you know reduce operational costs but you you don't complicate your goal or your vision too much so that gets diluted po po is the value maximizer po ensures that we serve the desert first to our customers so po ensures that uh, there is a maximum roi and we provide the most valuable item first to our customers and out of this product backlog you know, we go to our sprint planning. So, what would be the input for sprint planning? User stories, features, and backlog. Features, yeah, user stories. So, from from Scrum Guide's point of view, right? Uh, you know, the product backlog contains yeah. product backlog items. Okay. okay. From Scrum Guide's point of view. Uh, people started, you know, relating it to, say, uh, epics or user stories. This is the hierarchy, because you know, Scrum. When Scrum was getting popular, Jira was also getting popular. People started using Jira as their management tool, and then Jira introduced these two work items, and that is why probably most, you know, we mostly relate to uh, when we talk about requirements, we relate to epics or user stories. But when we talk about safe, you know, we have some specific uh, terminologies that we'll discuss. So for now, we'll just call it, you know, some PBIs or requirements. We have this, the product owner has prioritized these mini items and that becomes our, and team velocity. What is velocity? Number of stories that you can do in a certain time. Yeah, how much, how much we can complete as a team? And then also our current capacity that, hey, you know, this is a month of December, there are a lot of holidays, a lot of people are taking uh, vacations, so we don't have too much of capacity for this particular sprint. So they, this become the inputs. Okay. So we forecast what we can build. The product owner will present the prioritized items. We'll forecast uh, how many items we can build out of those prioritized items. Based on our velocity capacity, we probably, you know, we can invite some subject matter experts if required. The output of sprint planning is our sprint backlog. So sprint backlog has, what is that we are going to build in the current uh, sprint? And how are we going to build our plan to implement? So that is what a sprint backlog will have. So we'll also have a sprint goal. So why a goal? To ensure what's been decided is, decided is done. Mm, no, sprint is done when the time box is over. Now the sprint backlog might have, you no. Know, we have we created a you know, small subset of the product backlog, right? This is what we are going to build. Now this might have uh, probably some defects, some user stories, some features, some requirements. The business might not be able to relate to everything. That is why we are saying we have a sprint goal that in this sprint, we are going to enable smart payment for our customers. Or in this sprint, we are going to uh, enable easier way to search for products. So we have a sprint goal. So that will not only help the business to understand what the team is trying to achieve, but also we will stay focused. The entire as a team will stay focused towards our goal. And once we have a sprint backlog, you know, we have our execution sprint two to four weeks. We have our 
daily scrum for 15 minutes and the developers they turn this sprint backlog into an increment once the time box is over we do a sprint review the sprint review we discuss what we have built in the last two to four weeks we demonstrate the product and then we discuss about it so sprint review is not only about looking back that what and how we built it it's also about forward looking that hey you know it has anything changed in the last uh, two to four weeks has any priority changed what is that we are going to build in the next sprint so we'll talk about this we invite our stakeholders here and if the work is accepted then we say we have increment so <clears throat> that work which meets the definition of done becomes an increment we'll talk about definition of done and the last event we say hey you know we need to meet and then see what we have learned so while sprint review is about product retrospective is about people process communication everything so quality of our product quality of our work quality of our way of collaborating what is that we can do better what is that we can retain you know we did really well so we should retain that what we should stop doing what should we stop doing what should we retain and what should we continue or what should we include and if there are any improvement items we apply it in the next sprint and we have a continuous exercise during the sprint backlog refinement so that we continuously look at the requirements add more details to it prioritize and then you know, for the next sprint planning when we go we are ready with our requirements you know, which are ready to be picked for the next sprint and we have scrum master who ensures that everybody understands scrum you know, they have all the events meaningful events we have actionable items out of every event. Scrum Master you know, facilitates impediment removal, facilitates the team, facilitates the events, and plays different roles like coach, mentor, you know, teacher, based on the situation. So if you look at it, product backlog, this is an artifact. Spent backlog is an artifact, and increment is an artifact. So this is in planning, it's an event, and we have this. Goals. This is a role. 